Four liter versus three liter. Come on, mate. All right, so the black truck's a three liter, red truck's a, a four liter. He's cheated up on some tires. We're on stock tires before a little bit. sitting here in a gas station parking lot. Looks like the fuel pump took a crap. I don't think it's working. Caroline and I pulled the Ranger home with the Jeep. I pulled the computer and you can see that capacitor is blown right there. Right, guys here's the deal with the helicopters garrett and i grew up flying rc helicopters and rc airplanes together he started to get into it and so i saw it as a great opportunity to start myself so i've been taking lessons we're going up today in the r22 we're going to do some some patterns and some landing some takeoff and some hovering and i gotta say he and i and mostly him he's an incredible driver of everything but I think I'm a pretty decent driver of most things myself, but this is by far the hardest thing I have ever done. It is so humbling. You would think that hovering wouldn't be as difficult. You'd think it'd be like gliding in an airplane, but it's completely different. The amount of coordination needed to handle the cyclic, which is controlling forward, back, left, and right, the collective, which is doing up and down, and the foot pedals, which are rotating you left and right, is incredibly hard to combine all three of those skills together. Come tag along as we go flying for a little bit and we'll get back to the car stuff. hours we started in Sarasota went down to Venice over to my office for a little bit we went into a Robertson R22 just like this one it was so sick today I made some leaps and bounds as far as my abilities went and for training goes for a student pilot if you're thinking about doing this you should definitely do it just go for it it's an incredible learning curve I've done a lot of challenging things in my life but this is one of the hardest things I've ever learned to do and each time you go, you learn drastically much more information and skills acquired. It's just incredible. Go become a pilot, do it. Well guys, tough start to the morning with the Ranger. Stalled out in an intersection and it seems like either the starter's bad or the battery's cooked. So my boy Justin, or Dustin is coming down the street here. Give me a little jump start. Got her neutral, nothing. Either bad alternator, bad battery, or starter. The starter's not even clicking. Well, I'm actually on the way to the Freedom Factory after I leave work to put my new wheel and tire setup on. Got these asphalt circle track Hoosiers and some big offset wheels. Pretty excited how this thing's gonna turn out. We're gonna do a little test today on the street, see how, or test today on the track with Cletus and Justin, see how she does. Well, real tough brake situation here. The battery and the alternator are completely fine, which means I got a starter issue. So anytime I'm trying to jump it, I gotta find a guy in a parking lot, help me push this thing so I can just drop it in first and take off. But we're moving. She runs great. Turns out, it wasn't the starter, it wasn't the battery, or the alternator. It turns out that the wiring was cooked somewhere on the ignition to the starter, so I hardwired it to this switch. Check this out. That is custom right there. I should wire this. Drill a hole in my dash or something. 
That's it. Now she's working. I think we're going to go rip these things on the track. Oh, these are the new wheels and tires I got. They only have about two inches of back spacing, which everyone's giving me crap about because they say I'm going to blow these things out when we are rubbing. Rubbing is racing, but I actually got a smaller tire for the inside wheels than the outside. The outside is our insides are and I'll tell you what when I'm on the brakes trying to slow down it pulls hard to the right and I'm sorry it pulls hard to the left and it's quite squirrely so compared to the meat doggers that are on here we'll see how these things do because they have to be steel wheels that's, in, that's part of the rule so I knew I needed wheels no matter what and might as well go full blow with the with the Hoosiers Dude, I like this oh That's an XLT Ford Ranger. Man. Oh. All right, Gary and I are going to do some spectator drags. Got my hot wire. Four liter versus three liter. Come on, baby. All right, so the black truck's a three liter, red truck's a, a four liter. He's cheated up on some tires. We're on stock tires for a little bit. Spectator drags now they will flip one lap. All right. truck to be. I don't know. I feel like if I had some minnows on the front, yeah. it would help me a lot. Well, you but can... I'm top a second and bottom a third. It's tough. I'm not yeah. in a good spot. But I think when we're in traffic, we'll be in a little Yeah, you're bit. open track right now. But, dude, it's crazy because the look and the sound, it looks and sounds like they should be going way faster than they are, but yet they're <laughs> so slow going around the track. Watch this, dude. I'll, I'll play full defense here. Okay. Can I get my car leg? No, he's good. You'll be all right. Out there. 
him a car link. He said I should have put my nittos on the front. I'm gonna give him a car link. Alright. I think it's just all tire though because know, there's really no speed difference. I'm like, gonna get Wayne. I'm gonna try and really jump him on this one. Yeah, he says he's gonna give you a hit. Oh, so okay. and a car length. So. guys the ranger freaking crushed it today I'll tell you what these hoosiers despite all the chirping those boys were making really made the difference i gave garrett the hit and i gave him a car length and still put a car length on him at the finish line so that just goes to show that this thing is stout we had an epic day oh my gosh so garrett took the prize ranger out through the mud hole super confident got it completely stuck so jh had to pull it out with his and without him noticing George hooked up the toe strap to his rear bumper cover instead of the hitch so when he ripped it that rear bumper cover just started to pull off and I was bent over crying I was laughing so hard snatch it like you mean it go <laughs> I see that coming in slow motion. <laughs> I knew it. I'm like George re hooked into my freaking bumper. You about got it. Oh, One more. Oh boy. Not only that, but doing the spectator drags with our Rangers just to get a good feel of how we match up. Now, Garrett is driving a three liter five speed. I'm driving a four liter five speed. I also have a very short wheelbase truck compared to him. And then I had the different wheel and tire set up. Now he said he wants to run some nittos, but given how much quicker my car was with these wheel setups, I would imagine that he's gonna be switching. So I would imagine that a lot of the other competitors that are gonna be watching this video before the race are gonna be doing the same thing, knowing how much of a difference that's actually making. I'm sitting here in a gas station parking lot. Looks like the fuel pump took a crap. Can't get her started with any starting fluid. Tried jumping the relay on the fuel pump. This happened last time I filled it up with gas. It had trouble starting and so I push started it and it was fine, but just can't seem to get it this time. So I'm gonna go get my truck and trailer, take it home and start taking this thing apart. Dang it, we got a week left and I was planning on gutting it today to put the cage in, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be happening. So this is part of it. I'm in the Uber on the way home to go get my truck and trailer and I just thought about something. Same thing happened to me in the Fox body at Cletus and Cars Houston. I was gonna burn out, tap the wall, car shut off. Okay, these 90s Fords have a fuel inertia switch, which when I was pulling out of the gas station, I slammed on the brakes real hard to, to stop for traffic just to kind of feel the car because the brakes have been pulling hard to the left, which I guess for circle track racing is 
ideal. However, driving home in the Uber, I thought it's probably the fuel inertia switch that clicked when I slammed on the brakes and that's why I won't start. Because it turns over just fine and you can start to hear it get going just a hair and then stop. So I'm thinking that inertia switch is stopping the car from starting. It's the same problem I was having in the Fox body. So we're turning around and I'm gonna go try that before uh, we go home and get the truck and trailer. All right, let's try this. All right, here she is. Let's see if the flip will switch. These flips, these switches are in the passenger side kick panel down here. Where's mine at? It's right here. I don't think it's working. Dang it. Well, it wasn't the fuel inertia switch, so I guess it's back home, get the trailer, and get this thing home. Figure out what's wrong with it. So, after a long, stressful night, Caroline and I pulled the Ranger home with the Jeep. I used this super bad Freedom Rope toe strap. I paid for it. It's not a sponsored ad, but they sent Garrett a rope a while back. So I'm showing my support back for supporting him by buying one and it worked perfectly. I even got the shackles on the end. Got to get the shackles for easier connection to stuff. But uh, got her home and been doing a lot of research online and I figured out what the problem was. I pulled the computer and you can see that capacitor is blown right there and a few of these other capacitors have some drainage around them as well so i got a new pcm ordered and then i thought holy crap i hope it's the pcm and not the wiring so i got a multimeter set up and i've been testing the pins on the pin out here so if you watch it's getting power when i connect it to pin number one let me get my ground set up here. Okay, so if you watch that, I'm gonna put it on pin number one and 12 volts. I also checked a few more of the pins, areas it said to online just to confirm and it looks like the wiring harness is completely fine. It's just the PCM, which I got two on the way because I've only got a week left. I wanna make sure to get it done just in time. So we still have to put the cage in the uh, PCM's not gonna be here till Tuesday, so I'm gonna have to have Ty do the cage on Wednesday or Thursday before the race, but it's really coming down to it. I've been stressing a lot about it. All right, a little update on my 12 valve. I had it sent in for some maintenance and some work. I was losing a lot of coolant every week. I'm talking like completely dry by the end of the week. So I did a pressure test on it up at the shop and it turns out I had a Pull in the radiator but come to find out there is a blown head gasket so it's a big l it's not going to hydro lock because the gasket's blown out between the, the port and the outside of the block it's not going into the cylinder so i was kind of trying to figure okay do we buy a new head or do we get this one i have remachined so we called some machine shops and with timing and in the consideration that this block has over two hundred and ten thousand miles 500 bucks for a new head is gonna be worth it. So I bought a new head, I bought ARP head studs, all the gaskets, and I'm gonna tear this thing apart and put a new head on it this week. The truck is still drivable, but you know, it's definitely got a lot more oomph after we do the bigger injectors and valve springs. So I just wanna make sure she's dialed and gonna hold up for a long time because I plan on driving this truck for a couple more years. So it's an update on my truck. Both of them are down <laughs> right now, but doing my best to make sure to get everything back up and going. Danger Ranger is this, Saturday and drift night is on Friday. Make sure you guys get pay-per-view at baldeagle.com or in-person tickets are available on the foot. So that's an update on things. Things are getting down to the wire here, but that's just how I like it. It's, I get so fired up. I'm losing a lot of sleep, but I'm having so much fun and enjoying the process. My buddy messaged me who's flying in, who you guys are going to meet 
he's like, this just looks like such a thrill dealing with all the BS of cars breaking down and getting them ready for the events, but that's just so part of it. It's bringing me back to race week, which we have again in about four to five weeks, and I gotta still haven't pulled the motor out of my Mustang from the last one. So there's gonna be a lot of content coming about that as well. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, leave me a comment, follow along on this journey. We've got a big race coming up this weekend, getting my truck dialed, getting the Ranger dialed, and then getting the Mustang back going again for race week 2.0. All right, guys, we'll see you later. Hey guys, here's a little demo of what 160 pound valve springs, a lift pump, and 15 over injectors will do to your 12 valve. Oh, and a blown head gasket.